Hello, my amazing artist. I love cupcakes, and this one looks just good enough to eat. So today I'm gonna show you how to create a cupcake like this, a cupcake picture in the style of the artist Wayne Tebow. And so we're going to be using just some regular drawing paper. What ca whatever kind of paper you have would be, would be fine. I took a regular size sheet of paper like this and cut it in half. And so you see I got a smaller rectangle piece that I turned vertically with a long side going up and down. And that's what I used to put my cupcake on. So if you wanted to leave yours big, that would be fine. And then the materials that we use are just crayons, markers, water, and I also used a Sharpie marker to do my outlines. So first I'm gonna show you a little bit about the artist Wayne Tebow. Wayne Tebow was an artist who was born in 1920 and he grew up in California. And he, one of the first things he did for his art career was he worked for the Walt Disney Studios in the animation department. And the animation department is the place at Walt Disney where they do all the drawings for all of their cartoons. And so to begin with, he was our cartoonist and an illustrator. An illustrator is someone who draws pictures for books. And he also liked to paint signs. Sometimes you might see signs that are on storefronts or different places. Well, he did that. And then later, he just became just an artist doing paintings. He first did abstract art, and we've talked about abstract art before. That's art that doesn't really look like something, or if it does look like something, it may look very different than it does in real life. And then later after that, he started just painting everyday things like pinball machines. A pinball machine, if you don't know, was a type of game that people used to play. It was a big freestanding game. Um, and it had little controls and a ball that would go around and you had it had different things it had to do. And he drew cosmetics, like makeup, just everyday things. But he got really famous for drawing his desserts. That was his most famous thing. And so the one that we're gonna look at today is cupcakes. He did a lot of drawings of cakes and lollipops, but this one is cupcakes. And you can see, don't those just look yummy, those three cupcakes? Um, one of the main things that he was known for in his artwork was using the bright colors and strong light. And whatever he was drawing, if he was drawing cupcakes or a cake or a lollipop, it was the main focus of his composition. See, he didn't have a lot of other stuff going on. It's very plain in the background. So all of your focus is really on these cupcakes. He used strong lighting. So look at these shadows created by the cupcakes. It's as, it's as if a light is shining down on them, a very strong light, and it's creating these shadows. So today, we're gonna start doing our picture, and you're gonna take your paper. Again, you're gonna turn it vertically, and I'm gonna show you how to draw your cupcake. So I'm gonna draw with a Sharpie marker. You may wanna start out with a pencil, and then if you, that way if you mess up, you can erase, but I'm gonna use the Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing. And the reason I like a Sharpie is because later I'm gonna add water uh, to create some of my shadows or my light areas, and the, because a Sharpie is a permanent marker, it won't bleed. So if you have a Sharpie, it'd be great. So to begin with, we're gonna start sort of in the middle of our paper, and we're gonna make a zigzag line that goes almost all the way across. And um, uh, you remember a lot of the times I use my finger to draw first and it kind of gives me an idea of how big I need to make things. So start about in the middle and just make really, really close to the edge, make zigzag lines. It doesn't, you can make them small zigzag or big fat zigzags, just whatever you want. And then stop really, really close to the edge. Just leave a little space there. And then we're going to make our lines that go down. We're making the wrapper for the cupcake. And cupcakes, they're not perfectly straight. They kind of slant. So we're gonna make two somewhat diagonal lines that come down and slant. So let's start here at that very edge of that zigzag line. And we're gonna go almost to the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom of our paper. See how I kind of slanted it? And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and try to stop the same distance you did from the bottom so that we're gonna meet them up and make the bottom of our cupcake. So remember this one needs to slant a little bit also. And then we're just gonna draw a horizontal line and connect those. Horizontal goes across, okay? 
Now, everywhere that the point of your zigzag line comes down, you're gonna make a line that goes down. And at first, they're gonna kind of slant a little, but the closer to the middle of your cupcake they get, they're gonna be more straight. That'll make it look more three-dimensional, okay? So I'm gonna slant a little bit less here. And then this one's really close to being in the middle, so it's gonna be pretty straight. And then I'm gonna slant that one a little bit, okay? All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put a cherry on our cupcake. So see, here's mine. And the cherry overlaps everything. It's in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw mine. So I'm gonna come kind of in this area up here because it would be somewhere up here and I'm gonna draw my little cherry. So the shape for the cherry is kind of a circular shape, but kind of a heart shape, and it kind of just goes down and around like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll make a stem. So we'll go up and I'm gonna kind of curve it. There's my stem. Remember, it overlaps. It's in front of all the icing in the background. So I wanted to make it first so my lines weren't going through it. It's in front of those lines. Okay, now let's start making our icing. We're gonna have three yummy layers of icing here. So I'm gonna start at the bottom by the zigzag line and just kind of make a line that kind of curves down in the middle a little bit and curves around. That's our first layer of icing. Now, as it gets closer to the top, the layers kind of go in. So you wanna start a little bit over this time, right in this area. And I'm gonna make another one that curves and it goes down. You watch out for the cherry though. When you get to the cherry stop, it overlaps. And then just kind of imagine where that would come out. There you go. And then my last layer is gonna kind of point up at the top. You know how when, when artists, cake artists make something and they do their ice and they kind of swirl it around and it makes a little point at the top. So I'm gonna go in a little bit more make a point at the top, and remember the cherry overlaps, so I have to stop, and then I come out, okay? And then one more thing is we're going to make a horizontal line behind the cupcake, because this is gonna be the table, and that's gonna be our background. So come down a little bit from the middle. The middle is right about here. Come down a little bit and start a horizontal line. I'm gonna stop where the cupcake is. Then I'm gonna pick my Sharpie or pencil up and imagine where it would be so I come out pretty close to it on the other side imagine it's right there and then it would come out here okay and that is all of our drawing so if you have drawn with a pencil now use your sharpie and go back and outline all of your lines <coughs> excuse me you may want to make your black lines a little bit thicker and that's okay you can do that just get it how you want <coughs> And then I'm gonna show you about coloring it. All right, let me get mine that I finished coloring. So I started by first coloring the cupcake holder. And if you'll take a magic marker, if you have washable magic markers, you can do this technique that I do. So I wanted each little section of my cupcake holder to look different. Variety in art is very good. So I didn't want them all to be the same pink shade that I used. I wanted some dark and some light. So for this one, I just colored it using the marker. And remember, I've shown this before, when we color with markers, you start at one side and go across, then you go down and you just keep going in layers. So I did every other one the dark pink, just this marker. And then for these layers, I outlined them in the pink. And then I took some water and a paintbrush and I just added that to it and it made a lighter shade, okay? So let me just show you real quick. So let's pretend like I'm doing, let's pretend I've already colored that and then I wanna do this on this side. So when you use, if you have a marker like this, some of you may not have these, but if you have one of these, it's called a broad tip. If you hold a marker more like this straight up and down, you get a thinner line. But if you hold it on the side like this, you can get a thick line. So I'm gonna use my thick line and outline it, that shape. Then I'm going to get, I have some water and a paintbrush over here. If you don't have a paintbrush, you could use a Q-tip. 
but let me show you my water. Here's my water and my paintbrush, and I don't want the water just dripping and, uh, you know, making puddles for my brush, so I dip it in the water, and then I just kind of drag it on the side, and that gets some of the water out so it's not too much. And then I just go back and kind of paint over those outlines, and then you see how it makes the marker kind of bleed, and it makes it more like a watercolor. When your brush starts getting dry and scratchy, dip it again, wipe it a little bit on the side, and then just go back. So that's how I get those lighter areas on my cupcake holder. Okay, so let me go back and show you this one. Okay, after that, you can color your table in your background. And I used a marker here and I used a crayon here. So it's just whatever you want to do on that. You decide how you want to do it. Just remember when we're coloring with crayons or markers, we go in the same direction and go like a ladder and it'll look a lot better. And then I colored my cherry. I left a little white area so it looked like it had a reflection on it, a little white circle. And then another thing that Wayne Tebow did in a lot of his artwork, I showed you about how he used shadows and shading, and it gives our, uh, the things that we're drawing, a sense of form. Form is when things look three-dimensional, and three-dimensional is when you can see all the way around it. So we want this icing to look like it has form so it doesn't look so flat. See the difference in this one and that one? This one is very flat. I haven't done anything to it yet. But this one, I've put a little bit of shading on the side and it, it gives it the appearance that it's a little bit more three-dimensional. So to do that, I used a crayon and I'm gonna use a blue crayon. You could use gray or a, a good cool color is good for this, for our shadow. So I'm gonna use a blue and you just start on this side and it's really better if you start coloring light because you can always go darker. If you start pressing down really hard and make it too dark, it you can't go back once you've made it really dark. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly press down from my edge. And you just go a little bit of the ways out. You don't go all the way across. And then you, as you get closer for, or farther out, you press down even lighter. So it all just kind of blends into the white. So I'm gonna go about, about that far, but I'm gonna go back again and go a little darker around the edges because you do want it to show up. Just pressing down lightly and the more you color over it, the darker it'll get. I'm just really using a light hand right here. And as I get further out, I just barely, 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 super duper gently press down and it blends in with that white. So you can decide how dark you want your shadow to be on this side, but just make it blend as it gets farther out. And then I would go up here and I would do the same thing. Kind of just lighter as I work my way out. So you would go through the, each one of those doing that. Let me show you my finished one again. <clears throat> okay, so you see there how I did my shading. And then I just chose the colors that I wanted for my sprinkles. That gives it just a little bit extra. And so sprinkles can be little dots or they can, you know, some sprinkles are little lines like this. So you decide how you want your sprinkles to look and just put them all over your cupcake like that. So I cannot wait to see what you do. I hope that if you're a distance learner that your parents will email me what you did. Uh, my email is Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y dot N-O-C-K at leecountyschools.us. And I would love to see your Wayne Tebow cupcake. Thanks, guys. See you later.